This is a little-known story of how two relatively unknown IBM labs collaborated to create a device called SCAMP which helped change all of our lives. My name is Paul Friedel. I invented SCAMP and I'll be the one narrating the story for you. First I'll let you listen in as SCAMP joins the permanent collection of the world-famous Smithsonian Institute. Then I'll tell you the brief story of how it all came about and finally I'll introduce you to the key people who made it happen. Let's listen in as J.B. Eklund, Curator, Division of Computers, Information and Society, of the National Museum of American History accepts IBM's donation of SCAMP to the Smithsonian Institute. John, would you like to say a few words at this point? Sure, Paul. Happy to. Come on up. Um, we are uh, building a, an exhibition about information. It is not just about computers. Uh, not that I'm not fond of computers, quite the opposite. I'm sort of dotty about them. But uh, to be fair, uh, we must include uh, communications as well as computers uh, because so much of what we know uh, of today in uh, the information industry really started uh, back with the f first digital device uh, in the late 1830s, Samuel F. B. Morris's uh, telegraph and uh, continued on from there. In the post-war period, of course, uh, the computer has uh, come to the fore and become the quintessential information engine. And as you know, the digital technology has now come back into the communications uh, area and uh, the uh, communications uh, industry, essentially, and the telephone and uh, coming up, it looks like TV and almost everything else has become digitized. We want to tell that story uh, both in terms of uh, the uh, technical achievements uh, that have uh, come along the way, like SCAMP, um, and, but also to talk about uh, the uh, impact on this because it has changed uh, not only all of our lives in the recent period, but it really changed the life of the, of the uh, country uh, starting uh, all the way back. Uh, certainly the change has been most profound and most uh, pronounced and most obvious uh, in the period uh, in which you and I have lived. Uh, and uh, so the largest part uh, of the show uh, does deal with the, the post-war period. Um, I have to say, I'm required to say by Smithsonian policy uh, that I have an agnostic position uh, here about uh, uh, SCAMP vis-a-vis -vis whether or not it will be on exhibition. Uh, I, my interest is in having it on exhibition for a number of very good reasons. Uh, for one thing, uh, no matter uh, how uh, SCAMP uh, ends up uh, in terms of its precise place in history, and that always takes time. There is no doubt whatsoever that it was a towering achievement, uh, really a remarkable uh, conception by uh, Paul Friedel and a remarkable execution by uh, a team of people, some of whom you've seen. Uh, I mean, it just uh, I've been looking at the history of microcomputing now for several years, and it absolutely knocks me over that anyone, even IBM, got something out in six months. <laughs> and that is absolutely incredible. Uh, most of the uh, uh, other uh, people who uh, did microcomputer projects uh, looked rather more like a kind of a Keystone Cops movie. But to be able to uh, coordinate this uh, and, and uh, get it done in, in uh, such a short period of time, and uh, really an absolutely stunning design. Hey, you could go out and sell these. Uh, today, you'd have to uh, do a few things to the insides and uh, get a different chip and so forth. But uh, the design is certainly absolutely, absolutely stunning. The achievement at the time was uh, absolutely amazing. 
but uh, perhaps uh, understandable if you consider what a remarkable institution that the, this science center is uh, in a very re remarkable uh, company. Now, one of the reasons that uh, I am pushing to uh, exhibit SCAMP is that uh, we want everybody to know, contrary to popular opinion, that the microcomputer was not born in January 1975, uh, and it was not uh, a uh, technology uh, that uh, could only be done by teenagers in garages. I'm enormously pleased that uh, we're going to get scamp. I certainly hope that uh, the vicissitudes, the great gusts that blow back and forth uh, and can change the content of an exhibit uh, will allow us uh, to uh, show SCAMP and to let people know what a terrific achievement this was. Uh, and in any case, I am very pleased to be here to accept SCAMP into the national collections of the Smithsonian. Thank you very much. So how did the innovation of SCAMP come about, especially within IBM, which at that time was largely organized around the concept of large centralized computers and time-sharing terminals? It happened because IBM had previously created two laboratories in California's Silicon Valley, the Palo Alto Scientific Center, at 2670 Hanover Street and the Advanced Systems Development Lab hidden away in the Santa Cruz Hills on Guadalupe Mines Road in Los Gatos. Both of these labs were given free reign to seek and develop new systems and business opportunities for use within several years. These two facilities formed the ideal environment for creating a revolutionary device like SCAMP, the first IBM personal computer. All that was needed was a direction. The direction came in 1972 as Paul Friedel, that's me, a manager in PASC, conceived the idea for developing SCAMP, a personal portable IBM computer. To prove feasibility for this idea, I presented IBM executives with an ambitious plan to build SCAMP within six months and demonstrate it on the desks of IBM executives. At that time, there were no Apple or Microsoft corporations, and the term personal computer had not yet entered into the popular lingo of computing. Since 1972 was a high watermark in centralized mainframe computing, when the IBM execs heard my plan, they were stunned. And after a few seconds, they spoke out, wouldn't that be something? And that phrase became our project's motto. Created by Ken Iverson, APL is a beautiful and extremely powerful programming language which was in use throughout IBM in the 1960s and 70s. APL could do almost anything, but even more importantly, APL changed the way you thought. Six months later, Joe George, who was the SCAMP hardware team leader, and I headed east to demo SCAMP to many IBM execs across the country. After scores of demos, the day came for the final one which would determine whether IBM would follow SCAMP into the PC age. The final scene is in the main ballroom of the Marriott Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. I got lost on the highway and came in a bit late. There are too many Peachtree Streets in Atlanta, Georgia. 
There he is, shouted an IBMer in the hotel lobby. Where the heck have you been? John Opel, the IBM president, is already here. Oh my gosh, we ran into the ballroom. The president was not in the room yet, thankfully. Scamp was sitting on a table in front of two chairs, one for me and one for Opal. I quickly booted Scamp up and it just got done when in walked the president. The ballroom was darkened with spotlights shining on Scamp and gulp me. There were 50 or so IBMers standing in the dark around the outside walls of the ballroom. No one was making a sound. Everyone had his ear tuned up to try to hear what was going to be said in the middle under the spotlight. The demo went off without a hitch, and I joined the others in the dark. The next was a flip chart presentation of the funding needed to develop a production version of SCAMP. The hopeful development VP, Dave Slattery, then told Mr. Opal that since the SCAMP came out of nowhere, there wasn't money in the current budget to proceed. John Opal said, Well, don't look at me. I don't have any money. Oh, no. The room was silent. All of our breathing stopped. So finally, after a, a delay, Dave Slattery said, Well, what should we do then? And John Opal replied, And this is a quote, If it was up to me, Dave, I'd go four and a half million dollars over budget. Well, they shook hands, the president got up, and, and left the ballroom. The room took a breath and sighed. He had to give a speech in the hotel, so that left just Scamp and I and all of the other IBMers in the ballroom, and... We simultaneously lift out our cheers, clapping, backslapping. What a feeling. The scamp and the personal computer era had begun. That's how it happened in 1973. And here are the people who made it happen. <laughs>